The nuclear bomb is the most powerful weapon mankind has ever invented. The two atomic explosions over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, August 6 and 9, 1945, were a turning point in the history of civilization, changing the worldview of people and governments. The first explosion was the practical result of three years of work by American scientists, but theorists had thought much earlier about the possibility of military applications of atomic reactions. In the middle of the 20th century, the whole world lived in fear of nuclear war and many countries were seriously preparing for the apocalypse. Time passed, the geopolitical situation changed, and everyone relaxed. But isn't it a little early? I decided to look into who today can use weapons of mass destruction based on the principles of decay or synthesis of radioactive materials, and how many people will suffer as a result. Russia is testing the latest weapon with an atomic engine and an unknown warhead. In the US, a radical president proposes attacking hurricanes with nuclear bombs. But just like the other senior countries of the club, Great Britain and France, these two powers will never use any of their hundreds of warheads. First, this is due to the doctrine of assured retaliation in case of an attack on another country possessing nuclear weapons. Secondly, any strike on other states, or even new tests of detailed weapons, would cause dire economic and political consequences for the aggressor. Over the last 30 years, however, several other actors have emerged, officially or allegedly possessing atomic or hydrogen bombs in their arsenals. Many of them may well suddenly launch a missile at a sworn enemy. Our indispensable helper in determining the extent of destruction is the NukeMap website. Its creators have done a lot of work and have entered the results of most of the most famous nuclear and thermonuclear warheads into the database. It is clear that the data is taken from public sources and may have some discrepancies with reality, but for our purposes it is enough. The resource allows you to set a huge number of explosion parameters and get a list of all its main effects with descriptions and markings on the map of the selected target. When calculating each attack parameters were set to maximize the destruction of objects on the ground. The site itself could determine the height of the blast, at which the area hit by a 20 psi shockwave, about 0.14 MPA, causes serious damage to any building except fortified bunkers, would be the highest. With this approach, the detonation height becomes greater than the diameter of the fireball and it does not reach the surface. As a result, radioactive contamination of the environment is minimized, since the explosion does not raise enormous amounts of contaminated dust into the air at the moment of flashover. Most of the ionizing radiation is dissipated into the atmosphere, and the unreacted part of the nuclear charge, as well as objects contaminated by the primary radiation of the explosion, burn up within a radius of one and a half kilometers. The nuclear warheads chosen for the simulation were the most powerful known tested or in service. India and Pakistan Let's start with the least likely conflict. The two countries have been feuding for more than 70 years and during that time have acquired an impressive nuclear arsenal. Each side of the conflict has not only an irreconcilable hatred of its enemy, but also either hydrogen warheads or boosted atomic warheads. The latter are not a full-fledged thermonuclear bomb, but use a minor fusion reaction to increase the efficiency of the main fission reaction. Target, Islamabad. As delivery vehicles, India and Pakistan possess missiles of various ranges as well as aircraft capable of penetrating deep into enemy territory. The power of the munitions is unknown, but according to public records, devices ranging from 100 to 60,000 tons of TNT equivalent have been tested. Indian explosions were the most varied in destructive power, suggesting the presence of tactical nuclear missiles. Such weapons can be used to break through enemy defenses with lightning speed or to support their forces in close proximity to the front lines. Target, New Delhi. Dense development aggravates population losses, but it is impossible to calculate its effect. Israel and Iran. Two more dangerous players in the Asian geopolitical arena. Israel got the technology to produce atomic weapons in the 1960s. The process was complicated and not always approved by the world community, but in the end the IAEA has no doubt that this country possesses at least 200 ready-to-use nuclear warheads. There is no confirmation of this, and the Israeli side denies their presence in any way, so the capacity of the charges remains in question, 
but we'll take it as a very realistic 25 kilotons. We will also consider hypothetical nuclear bombs or Iranian warheads to be of similar power. Both sides have ballistic missiles with the necessary range to hit each other. Target, Tehran. Despite severe damage, most of the city will remain livable. Iran has never conducted a confirmed nuclear test, but it is known that the country has the necessary infrastructure to produce such weapons. Over the past few years, test launches of new missiles have been made with varying degrees of success, and they are dual use, they can be both ballistic delivery vehicles for warheads and carriers of satellites in low orbit. One way or another, Iran is one of the centers of military and political tension in the entire Middle East region. Over the past 20 years, the already complicated relations between the two countries have become openly hostile. There have been no overt clashes so far, but each side is subversive, either overtly or covertly, with radical armed groups in the immediate vicinity of the enemy's territories. Target, Tel Aviv. North Korea, DPRK, against everyone. A country that frightens the world as a model of totalitarianism, with a mad dictator at its head. Let's leave the reliability of these statements out of the equation, the important thing is that in the early 21st century North Korea conducted at least six nuclear weapons tests and declared the presence of hydrogen warheads in its arsenal. Experts from Russia, Great Britain, the United States and France estimated the power of the test explosions ranged from 500 tons to 100 kilotons in TNT equivalent. Target, Tokyo. No one knows what will happen as a result of an explosion over such a dense built-up area. Who could North Korea suddenly attack? For example, its southern neighbor, Japan, or even try to reach U.S. military bases in the Pacific, the latter is unlikely, because North Korea's main problem is the means of delivering warheads. Tested missiles show very questionable accuracy and reliability, so there is probably nothing to worry about for now. However, the solid power of the charges makes all neighbors in the region nervous and builds up their missile defenses. Target, Seoul. No one has ever blown up skyscrapers with an atomic bomb, so the effect is unpredictable. The death toll will probably be much higher. Will we all die? No, fortunately these scenarios are absolutely impossible. Nuclear weapons are a tool of deterrence and were used in combat only twice in 1945. There is a worldwide consensus, even among the most marginal states, that the use of atomic or hydrogen bombs would lead to two unpredictable and tragic consequences, up to and including local apocalypse. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.